And welcome to Bornholm, the rock and sunshine island. With its location in the Baltic Sea, closer to Sweden than to Denmark, Bornholm is one of the places in our country with the strongest feeling of independence. The island has its own language and its own flag. And uh, the larder of Bornholm virtually bulges with delectable delicacies from the many small-scale food companies. One of the local specialities is the northern European counterpart to olive oil, the cold-pressed rapeseed oil. Today I'll be cooking with that uh, particular oil and I'll also be celebrating the opening of the strawberry season. Later in the program, I'll be making grilled herring with green strawberries, mustard seed and rapeseed oil. And i show you how to make pancakes with vanilla parfait, strawberry salad and uh, strawberry syrup. The daily choices we make when using fat as part of our diet greatly influence our health. Rapeseed oil is one of the healthiest oils in the world. However, I did not come here in order to achieve a longer life, but because of its pleasure-giving qualities. In here lives Hans Hansen, the one and only rapeseed oil producer on Bornholm. Hi Hans. Hi Klaus. Hvad skal du have på flaske olie? Brug dem med fornuft. Du er en god menneske. Vi ses senere. Ja. Hej. Herring is uh, the most commonly caught fish in Denmark. They come in all sizes and varieties, and uh, as they've also got different spawning periods, you can catch herring at all times of the year. If you've ever been to the island of Bornholm, you would know that uh, smoked herring is one of the absolute specialities of the island. It is virtually impossible to leave the island without having had smoked herring from one of the many beautiful smokehouses you find in almost any village on Bornholm. However, in Denmark, we also enjoy herring as uh, pickled, salted, cured, marinated, and uh, as I'm gonna show you today, grilled. Grilled herring with green strawberries and uh, cold-pressed rapeseed oil. As you see, I have asked the fishmonger to scrape the scales. That's a dirty job. And um, when you deal with fat fish, you don't want the head, you don't want the, the bones. They have no use, they give a lousy bouillon. So all I need to do now is to uh, cut the fin and to scrape the slime. I think you could eat it, but I don't want to eat it. So I scrape it and always from the tail towards the head, otherwise you almost uh, destroy the, the flesh. Just look here. I don't think that is nice. Here we go. When I have finished a dirty job like that, I just uh, take away the newspaper and I've got a beautiful clean chopping board. When I work with fat fish such as herring, I prefer adding something acid, something sour. Sometimes it may be vinegar, it could be lemon juice, but what is really good is mustard. This one comes from Bornholm. It is made here and it is made from mustard seeds that have been grown on the island of Bornholm. The power, the strength and the acidity of the mustard simply cuts through the fat. 
salt and pepper. A little bit of lemon zest. Never use the white part, just the yellow part, which is full of etheric oils and which is not bit at all. And always use ecological lemons. You don't actually want to eat pesticides, do you? Dill. And then just um, wrap it like that. And salt. Olive oil. Now they just have to settle for 10 to 15 minutes in order for the mustard to transfuse into the herring flesh. Green strawberries, they are, you can see, very juicy. The flesh is firm like a green tomato. And then they are fruity and um, fresh in a lemon-like way. I say they could go with all kinds of meat, particularly with the uh, fat fish like mackerel, salmon and uh, herring. It kind of cuts through the oily aspect of the fish. We're just gonna cut them in very thin slices of about two to three millimeters. In that way, we get the perfect texture. Strawberries are ready and we can grill the herring. And you know what? I also bring the mustard seeds because when you roast these beautiful seeds, they achieve a fantastic crispiness and the roasting process brings out their full flavor potential. When it's your ambition to grill the fish or the meat directly on the grill without using any oil on the outside, it's very important that the grill is extremely hot. There are two ways in which you can check if the, if the fish is done. One is, of course, to lift it up and see how it looks beneath. And the other way is to just uh, consider the flesh. And um, if this part starts changing color, it is time to turn over the fish. These are done now. They have slightly changed color and uh, have a particular beautiful mustardy smell. Mmm, the most wonderful part is this, the crispy skin. It's delicious. I just need to uh, cut some shallots, chop them finely, and also chop some dill, and then I'm ready to arrange the food. The more you play, the more beautiful it gets. Here Some apple cider vinegar. Take a wild one. Fish and vinegar, especially fried fish and vinegar, is a well-known combination. Cold-pressed rapeseed oil, especially with the green strawberries. This oil is wonderful. And now I just need the mustard seeds. In Denmark, we always eat herring with rye bread, such as this one from the old bakery in uh, the village of Nykker. Kneaded by hand and cooked in a stone oven according to a 100-year-old family recipe. But uh, you can eat it with whatever type of dark bread you can get hold of, or just eat it with aquavit. Grilled herring with green strawberries, mustard, dill, and cold-pressed rapeseed oil. Here you are. Hej igen, Hans. Hej, hej. Stik selv med... Med lidt jordbær på. Ja, og det, og det koldpresset rapsål, det så gør. Uh, det ser godt ud. En tøjl. Mhm. Mm Skål. Mm. Det er det godt med øl. This is the rape. It is, uh, it's sown in... Uh, 
in August and uh, it's also harvested in August one year afterwards. So it has a longer growing period. Den følelse det er jo egentlig det er jo sjovt. Kan jeg vide hvad det kan blive til? Ikke? Altså hvad kan hvad kan det bruges til? Hvad er det næste skridt man nu skal ikke? Nu skal du ud og snakke med nogen omkring brugen af det, ikke? What Hans uh, is explaining is uh, the feeling he had when for the first time he succeeded in making a perfect cold pressed uh, rapeseed oil. The golden oil that ran through his fingers and he he tasted it and smelled uh, its beautiful aroma and felt how soft it was on his hands and he knew that he had he had made a product that uh, he could bring the whole way from the ground and to the table in the private consumer's cuisine and uh, he was very proud and he knew that it would change his life skal måske dyrke nogle øh, specielle grøntsager, vi kan blande i olien eller et eller andet, og så lave nogle, nogle andre varer, som, som er dyrket på Bornholm. Og man kan sige, at vi har, har det hele heroverfra. Ikke? His uh, rapeseed oil adventure has completely changed his perspective. So now Hans' dream is to um, refine the oil further, and uh, preferably in cooperation with uh, fellow farmers on Bornholm. He has found the marketplace, and he wants also Uh, he wants to give them the opportunity to get into contact with the market and maybe they could uh, produce vegetables or spices or herbs that could further refine uh, the rapeseed oil. Cold-pressed rapeseed oil is one of the healthiest types of fat. The oil is filtered and free from additives, but with a high content of mono and polyunsaturated fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids help with, for instance, strengthening the eyesight and the cells in our bodies and help prevent blood clots. Normally, it is difficult for us to get our omega-3 fatty acids as part of our diet, and our bodies cannot produce them themselves. Cold pressed rapeseed oil is used by leading chefs in the Nordic region and is often called the olive oil of the north. The climate on Bornholm and in the rest of Denmark is temperate coastal climate with cool summers and mild winters. But yet there is a difference. Spring arrives at Bornholm a couple of weeks later in the year and the summers are sunnier and drier. This means that on Bornholm you can successfully grow southern fruit trees such as figs and mulberries and they also have a healthy crop of durum wheat. instances of being let down have rendered the locals on Bornholm skeptical towards the authorities. There is a great feeling of solidarity which is due to incidents such as the wars in 1658 where Bornholm fought off the Swedish conquerors and surrendered themselves to the Danish king. World War II came to a very special end on Bornholm as the island was not liberated by the British along with the rest of Denmark on May 4th, 1945. The locals could tune in on their radios and hear Copenhagen celebrate, but no one mentioned Bornholm. Almost a whole year passed until the 5th of April 1946 before Bornholm was once more part of a free Danish state. The feeling of being left behind struck the locals on the island once more. But every time it has happened, the locals have demonstrated their ability and willingness to bounce back and get up again. This is a quality deeply embedded in the souls of the people of Bornholm. Do not take everything for granted or expect any help from the outside.
On Bornholm, it is easy to travel great distances in a very short space of time. Actually, the circumference of the island is only 105 kilometers, but the hills can be pretty daunting. Cycling Denmark is a labeling scheme for tourists on cycling holidays. If you follow the signs, you enter a network of 235 kilometers of cycling routes. If you see this logo, you have found a place where you can get a toolkit, safe bicycling parking and a hearty breakfast. Or information about the concept. In Denmark, we have grown strawberries since the 1600s, but we have been eating them long before that from wild plants. Hi, Esper. Hi, Klaus. In our country, the strawberry season is incredibly short. It runs from the end of June to the end of August. Oh, this is good, this here. This is a perfect moment. No, very good. So now the sun is warm. Warm is warm. It gives always double so much smell. What Jesper is telling me is that in addition to the importance of where the strawberries are grown, also their ripeness and the variety has a very high impact on their flavor. Strawberries are at their most delicious when they are taken directly from the plant, fully ripened and still warm from the sun. As a rule of thumb, never put the strawberries in the fridge. Yeah, we have a flask here. Jesper is the only man in Denmark to produce wine from strawberries. Every year he transforms 10,000 kilos of those wonderful Corona strawberries into 5,000 bottles of pink, beautiful, semi-sweet wine. Most people I know love herrings with green strawberries, but the next dish I'll show you is a dish without any enemy at all. Pancakes with strawberry salad, strawberry syrup, and a beautiful vanilla parfait. Let's start with the pancakes. That was four eggs. Now we need 300 grams of uh, flour. And I go for a rather sweet, uh, pancake dough, so I add 100 grams of sugar. In that way, my pancakes will be more crisp. And then some salt, because uh, it enhances the flavor of the other ingredients. Some beer. Brown beer or more light beer. And not only do they make your pancakes more crisp, they also add a little nice bitterness that uh, grown-ups love. And then the rapeseed oil. Rapeseed oil gives a beautiful color and a grain-like flavor. And the reason why I whisk it before adding uh, the milk is that in this way, my mixture will become completely homogenous. I can integrate the flour in the other ingredients. You know what? I actually forgot one thing, namely half a vanilla pot. But it is not too late. Can you see how windy it is? It is so windy that I'm almost afraid of losing my vanilla seeds to the sheep running around there. When you make a pancake dough, always leave the milk to the very end. In that way, it's much more easy to uh, mix all the ingredients together without it splashing around all over. Pour it slowly in several times, especially in the beginning, because the difference between the two textures is, as you can see, important. Later on, you can add uh, the milk more quickly. I want my pancake dough to be rather liquid because in that way I can make my pancakes more thin and crisp and lovely. Now you have to leave it for 30 minutes in order for the dough to set. And in the meanwhile, let's make the strawberries. These strawberries are absolutely perfect. I always wash my strawberries 
with the flower because if I cut the flower, then I kind of open the strawberry for contact with the water and they will absorb a lot and uh, you will lose a lot of flavor. And then um, a splash of uh, Jesper's wonderful strawberry wine. And if you don't have any strawberry wine wherever you live in the world, then use uh, a crisp rosé wine or even uh, some white wine. And uh, two tablespoons of honey. If you don't have liquid honey, then the only thing you have to do is to melt it in the wine and then cool it down and add it to the strawberries. This one is uh, Melissa. The leaves are good in a fruit salad. And the stalks, and you can add them here, but if you do so, then um, kind of mash them. Mm, in, that, in that way, all the lemon-like flavor comes out into my strawberries. Now leave the strawberries to rest for around half an hour. So now I show you the most simple and the best recipe for parfait in the whole world. It takes six egg yolks, half a liter of cream, and you just mix it all. It's very simple. 75 grams of sugar, and again, some salt to enhance the vanilla flavor. This one, I would never whisk it by hand. It would take me half an hour. And the very best thing about this parfait recipe is that crystallization cannot and will not happen. Now look at this. This is the perfect texture. When it is fluffy and airy in this way, it is ready for the freezer. So now to the freezer for four to five hours. Now to the syrup. I don't want all this uh, red water on my pancakes. A reduction of this kind is a very good way to get rid of your empty vanilla pots. So you can just whack up the heat in the beginning, but in the end you must be very careful not to caramelize the sugars because in that way you completely ruin the strawberry flavor. Now it has uh, the consistency of thick or semi-thick maple syrup, and that's how I want it. And now to the pancakes. The good thing about using a non-stick pan and about adding a little fat to your batter is that you can, you can actually fry your pancakes without using any fat at all. Make sure your pan is quite hot, otherwise your pancakes will be too thick. It may be a problem with the first one. To begin with, the pan may be a little dry. Sometimes it's a little difficult with the first pancake, but um, it doesn't matter, you can always eat it. It's wonderful. It's very firm and um, almost caramelized on the surface. And that's because I put this pretty high amount of sugar in the batter. Now, of course, you can add a little rapeseed oil to the pan. You get this uh, nutty, grain-like aroma that goes so well with pancakes. But you also get a different appearance. And as you see, also a little more yellow. Chopped, Melissa. Look at this syrup. Beautiful color. In we go with the Melissa. Now on ordinary ice cream from an ice cream machine, you usually scoop it up, but a parfait, you cut it. You see, it is a little cold, but after five minutes, it'd be perfect. Here we go. Rapeseed oil pancakes with strawberry salad, strawberry syrup, and vanilla 
parfait. Enjoy. Yeah.